Jetstream's about to kick back into high gear, and we're going to be able to see some severe weather as a result of that heading towards next week. There's going to be lots of storm fuel as a ring of fire pattern develops. A ring of fire pattern means heat and storms are going on at the same time, so we're going to have a lot of those high temperatures to talk about, too. Got all the details in this video, including some of my custom graphics. These awesome weather model maps right here give you a great idea of where the severe weather is going to go next week ahead of this jet stream. Make sure you're checking out the weather bell trial link right down there in the description for free access to maps just like these that I use in my videos, giving you a look at where different weather features are going to be. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you're considering hitting that subscribe button after this video if you want more consistent, accurate, and educational updates in the future. Let's get right into this one with that mid-level jet stream, about 15 to 20,000 feet on up there in the atmosphere. I'm using my trusty old European model to show you that jet stream, and there's not too many areas on the jet stream to watch as we head into this upcoming weekend. That's why I pause it here just briefly to show you. There's some blues around indicating some slightly stronger flow, but we definitely don't have any sort of troughs or stronger pieces of energy to be worried about. That's going to change a little bit, or at least in terms of some of the intensity of this jet stream as we head towards the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of next week, and really even onward. Notice this flow coming out of the Rockies, over into the North Central Plains, and then down towards the Midwest and Ohio Valley. This is a classic ring of fire weather pattern where those whites underneath these blues indicate down there towards New Mexico and Texas. We're going to have high pressure building on the northern and eastern periphery of high pressure systems like this. That's when you tend to get summertime severe weather setups for especially damaging winds move from northwest to southeast. That's what we'll be tracking into next week, and in fact, let's get right into the overview of some of those precipitation chances over the next five to seven days using that same model. Here we go, closing out this current week, going towards our Friday, July 26th of 2024. Notice here from parts of the Carolinas, as well as Georgia and Florida, all the way back on over there towards the South Central Plains and places like Oklahoma and Texas, we're going to have at least some chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. I think especially there towards the Carolina and Georgia coast, that's where we're going to have the best chance for more widespread coverage into the afternoon and evening Friday. We'll have the best chance or flooding there as well. Back here towards the monsoonal areas of parts of Arizona, New Mexico, the Four Corners region, as well as up there towards Wyoming, we'll also be watching some bouts of rainfall into our Friday afternoon and evening that will dissipate overnight and into our Saturday. Speaking of Saturday, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going to happen as we go towards our Saturday afternoon and evening. More storms down there over the southeast U.S. We'll be continuing to watch some of the flooding and isolated severe weather that could come out of those. But into our evening hours, this is when we're going to have that little low pressure system. You see it there with the 1003 millibar icon sitting over parts of North Dakota on our Saturday evening. Somewhere up in here in this circled area, we will have that threat for some isolated severe weather really kicking off this ring of fire pattern as we head towards the back half of the weekend. Notice how it's really going to begin to get going in a little bit more of intensity as we head towards our Sunday. Yes, this is all some thunderstorm action here from parts of the Midwest down to the Gulf Coast, but this is not that ring of fire. This is just some classic summertime thunderstorm moisture that's been slowly rising up from the Gulf of Mexico over the last few days by this point. This is what's going to be in association with that stronger setup right on the northern and eastern periphery of some of the ridging that's now going to be in the four corners. So Sunday afternoon, heading into the evening, if you live in Nebraska, the Dakotas, over there even towards parts of Minnesota, Iowa, as well as Wisconsin, that's where the best chance for severe weather will likely be then. Things really get uncertain heading towards the early to mid part of next week. Even though the jet stream looks like it's going to be active, the exact locations where complexes of severe thunderstorms are going to be, they're very uncertain, and I'm going to admit that to you right now, but according to this European model, we could have some clusters anywhere from around Minnesota and Wisconsin down towards the mid-Missouri Valley here through parts of Nebraska, Iowa, down to Kansas and the state of Missouri itself. All of these locations, you know, we're on that northeastern periphery of that ridge, so we'll definitely have to watch the severe weather chances on the rise. Notice there looked like there were multiple possible complexes, mainly of those damaging winds that tends to be the main threat with this kind of setup heading towards the early to mid part of next week. This is as we go towards Wednesday, July 31st at 2 a.m. So heading out of Tuesday into our Wednesday, this particular model, the GFS model as well, overall showing coverage now beginning to shift eastward towards the Ohio Valley Great Lakes. We could continue to watch even more activity into the middle to back half of next week. And I just really want to focus on the fact that we're seeing a pattern change. And this precipitable water graphic from the GFS model does a great job of showing that to you. Precipitable water is basically just the amount of moisture that can be dumped out of the clouds in any given location. And looking at this as we head towards this weekend, you can see the graphic really indicates that those yellows, those oranges, those reds, they're most prominent here from parts of the South Central Plains, the Midwest over to the Southeast. All of these locations just seeing general garden variety type summer thunderstorms, a few isolated stronger storms here and there, a few instances of flooding, but nothing extremely crazy. 
When we start to see some of that moisture lift north though and connect with that jet stream that's going to be up here in parts of the north central U.S., heading towards early to mid part of next week, that's when things start to get a little more concerning. So from Minnesota to Iowa, down to Kansas and Missouri, over to the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, this is looking like that target area where some of these storms are going to be cascading day by day from northwest to southeast with wind as the main threat, isolated hail and tornadoes and not fully being able to be ruled out. And in fact, let's look at the threats day by day. We're going to use my Severe Zones graphic to pinpoint it for you, heading towards our Saturday, July 27th. The most likely level 2 of 7, which means isolated severe weather is expected on my custom ONW severe scale. That's looking like it's going to extend from around Nebraska up there to parts of north central Minnesota. If you live in, in any of these areas in the Dakotas as well, be ready, mainly a wind and hail threat there. Heading into our Sunday, things get a little less certain day by day, but Sunday afternoon into the evening, it looks like that same general area, but now including more spots in parts of Wisconsin, Iowa, maybe down there towards northern Kansas. This overall zone is where some sort of isolated and maybe even scattered severe weather setup is expected going into our Sunday. And then as we go towards Monday, this is the last day I have my severe zones graphic for just because of how uncertain things get beyond there. Parts of the Midwest, the upper Midwest, the far southwestern corner of Michigan, and then on down there into Kentucky and western Tennessee. That's where somewhere in this area I expect the best chance for severe storms to be Monday afternoon as we start to see a lot of that moisture that's been rising up from the Gulf of Mexico connect with what's been coming in from the north central USA. And in fact, let's take a look at some of those six-hour precipitation increments on our European ensemble members. The more grays and greens you see on these kind of mean setups like this where the grays and greens indicate heavier rainfall and more confidence in that, that's where I'd put my confidence in the better chances of rain. So Saturday, definitely up there in the Dakotas, Minnesota. We have a very similar setup going into our Sunday, right? And that's why I've got that level two of seven likelihood at its highest in this general vicinity. A lot of that moisture down there towards the Midwest, Southeast, again, it's just going to be the general type thunderstorms that we're going to be watching down there as opposed to more severe weather generally being more possible up here in the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, heading out of Sunday into our Monday. In fact, notice we've got the low pressure system that comes along with that. That tracks on up there through a lot of eastern Canada heading out of Sunday into our Monday. So this is Tuesday, July 30th at 2 a.m., but this really encompasses a lot of the storms coming out of late Monday into that time frame. This is why I've got that area highlighted for Monday from Wisconsin curling all the way on down there through some parts of the southern Ohio Valley and into the Tennessee Valley. Pretty rainy to say the minimum, and we'll probably have some bouts of severe weather since we're on the eastern side of that ridge that's keeping it so dry, indicated by those whites up there in the southwestern U.S., Heading out of Tuesday towards Wednesday of next week, again, this is when the confidence really starts to decrease in where severe weather will be. We'll probably see whatever's left of that first event that's been coming out of the Northern Plains over here through the Eastern U.S. Tuesday, maybe some parts of the Ohio Valley, other areas of the East going into Wednesday. And then we'll actually have to turn our attention back to the Northwest of that because I think we could get another lower two coming through parts of the North Central USA the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, you could be back in that bullseye again as that northwest to southeast flow continues around the ridging that's going to continue progressing northward through the Rockies. So this is around the Wednesday to Thursday time frame of next week when something like this could occur. Notice these ensemble members already having those grays and greens in Minnesota, Iowa. That indicates pretty good confidence in some summertime severe weather. Honestly, though, take everything beyond the weekend with a grain of salt here, as there's a lot of discrepancies still going on, indicated by a lot of those general grays going on across the map. The temperature trends with this ring of fire pattern are really starting to get set in stone, though. So let's look at the anomalies for Friday the 26th, heading into our 27th on our Saturday. We're not really seeing this pattern set in by this point yet, but we're definitely looking at a lot of warmth from the four corners up to the north central to the northeastern USA. Any of those areas, the deeper the red, the further above average you are. In this graphic here, heading out of Sunday and towards our Monday, heading into the early part of next week, we're going to be watching those lighter reds there, especially surrounding Nebraska and the Great Lakes area about 10 degrees above normal in temperature uh, department for this time of the year, whereas down there in California, Nevada, as well as towards the Carolinas back to Texas, where it'll be generally rainier than it should be, even with the summer storms, five degrees below average. Look at this, though, as we close out July, heading towards the middle part of next week, you really see that ring of fire starting to take hold of the central USA. The storms will be right on the northeastern and eastern periphery of it, so it makes sense that that heat dome is right around the Rockies, heading on out into the high plains, because right on that outer edge is where the worst storms are going to be look at how hot it's going to be in terms of some of those heat index values we'll be well above 100 for a feels like temperature if the regular temperature isn't already in the triple digits towards next week let's time it out day by day with those daily high temperatures from the national digital forecast database provided to you right here here we go towards our friday 
July 26, 2024, closing out the current week. A lot of heat across the country, but a lot of it is actually seasonable in general, except for some of these numbers that you see coming out of the Rockies there in Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico, on out from parts of the Dakotas down to North Texas. A lot of 90s in this general vicinity. We're not going to see many triple digits yet here. Those triple digits in the southwest, pretty normal for this time of the year, maybe a little bit above average here in southern Nevada, parts of California and Arizona. And then if you're in this general vicinity, a lot of these numbers are, again, seasonable to slightly below low seasonable averages. 70s on up there in the Great Lakes and Northeast, you know, pretty nice for this time of the year. It could be worse. We've got 80s in the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, even some 80s as far south as close to the Gulf Coast. Yes, it will come with the humidity and the storms, but it's better than the 90s that have been going through in recent weeks. Moving past Saturday, it's very similar to Friday. Into our Sunday, Sunday afternoon, we continue to see that shield of heat really begin to build with that ring of fire in the central and south central USA. Yes, in parts of the north central panhandle of Texas, heading Amarillo points northward, we could continue to see this heat near record highs. You see that box right there in north central Texas. That indicates a record high whenever you see that with my high temperature graphics. That is what that means. So make sure you're keeping an eye out because this is some excessive heat there. Points eastward of that though, you know, Minnesota down to Louisiana, all the way over to the east coast of the U.S. We're really going to be anywhere from around 85 to 90 across the entirety of this region, which is a little above average for the northern tier of that, but towards the southeast, that's pretty normal for this time of the year. And then as we go towards our Tuesday, the heat really expands. That high pressure is going to continue building, which you can really infer from this graphic over Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. A lot more records getting thrown in the mix. We'll see plenty of 105 to 110 degree regular temperatures. That's not even with some of the humidity we'll see, especially as you go down there closer to the Gulf Coast. Those 90s will have quite a bit of humidity that will make it feel almost equal to some of those triple digits you get there in the central plains. That right line up there from the North Dakota area down there to Illinois, that could be some of the storm track locations that we see for next week, right on that outer periphery of the heat where you are able to tap into it, but you also have some of the cooler air just north. I'll watch that for those of you there, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at the tropics for those of you on the southeastern and eastern United States. Wow, this graphic says tropical cyclone activity is not expected during the next seven days. Expected doesn't mean that it can't happen, even if it's not expected. Yeah, you get my point here. I'm looking at something, and that's why I bring this up. I don't normally even bring the tropics up much in my videos. So let's take a look at the development chances from the European Ensemble members, see what they're averaging out to give us a look at heading towards next week because there has been something on the radar. I've been watching it on the European model itself for the last few days, and it's going to probably enter the Eastern Caribbean right about in here as we head towards next week. Let's look at this. Heading out of Wednesday into our Thursday, we'll see the impacts really pick on up for parts of the Windward and Leeward Islands, especially the northern parts of the Lesser Antilles there. Heading on up here into parts of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, especially the Dominican Republic, We'll be watching this piece of energy now. It has about a 10 to 20 to 30 percent chance of development, according to these ensemble members, by the time it reaches this point. But of course, I know a lot of you are watching from the USA, so let's see what it's going to do from there as it makes its continued trek towards the west northwest. We'll probably at least see some rain out of this. It's going to be a tropical low at the minimum, a type of wave as it makes its way through this area next week. Heading out of Friday towards Saturday, August 3rd. These things at least indicate that there's a 10 to 20 percent chance of a tropical depression making its way in this direction. Now, if there's a chance of a depression, there's a much higher chance that there's at least some rain moving through here. So for those of you in Florida, you definitely want to be keeping an eye out because you could at the minimum see some heavy rain and some gustier winds heading towards the very end of next week into the start of the weekend, maybe even towards Sunday, Monday time frame. I'll keep watch of it for you, but it's nothing to panic about right now. Certainly a signal that we could maybe see a depression or storm form if that overachieves just a little bit. So that's it for that part of the update. In fact, that's it for this entire update right here on the channel. I cover all corners of the USA, so no matter where you live, I hope I'm giving you that great content. Subscribe if I do. I'll see you back here in the next update, which will be sometime in the next few days. One nation weather.